fellow Rotarians, I'm very conscious of the honour that has been bestowed upon me to be President of Rotary International for the year 2009-2010. He's a very kind man, and he is very well respected, both in his personal and his business life. He's a man of high ethical standards. He's a quiet man, but I think his gentleness and his kindness and his care for me has always shone through. It's been a very happy marriage for 43 years. June is very interested in the various aspects of the house, particularly cooking. And she's very happy doing that and quite happy in her own home and in her garden. We're both fond of garden. John is a people's man. They used to say when he was working, that it could be a dock worker in Grangemouth, or it could be somebody who was in a very high-powered job. That didn't matter to him. He is just interested in them, for them, not for what they do or what they have. I was fortunate. You can't choose your parents, but if I had a choice, I would have chosen the two that I had. And I was very, very close to them. Being an only child, I think this sometimes happens. I've always lived in this area and been very proud of that. Where we're living at the moment is in Lundlisgo, and that's about as far as I've been from where I was born. When I was a boy, I was a Cub Scout, and then I was a Scout. That's one of the things that brought me towards Rotary. Okay, we'll have a look at the, the Newcastle. Yeah, we'll have a look at some of the old. In Scotland, football is the game. <laughs> That's you there. That's me there. And this was the very first in the entire world, the very first floodlight live football match. I support the local team because it is a community activity. I used to go with my father when I was a boy. I went with my grandfather also. And I've continued to go. I was educated at Falkirk High School and then went to Glasgow University where I took a degree in law. I practice all sorts of law. When you're younger you tend to do more criminal law, which I found interesting. I found your criminal clients were always pretty loyal to you, especially if you got them off, which in many occasions I was fortunate to have done. Shortly after I joined the firm in Grangemouth, another lawyer in Falkirk persuaded me to become a member of what we call in Scotland the Junior Chamber of Commerce. It was a good training ground. John had always been involved in something or other. He came back from the office and said, Bill Ramage has proposed me for Rotary and I think it'll be good. We are standing for the loyal toast. The Queen. The Queen. The Queen. I met John through business contacts. I immediately thought that John would make an ideal Rotarian. I proposed to him for membership of the Rotary Club of Greensmouth in 1970. I didn't join it to get business because most of the Rotarians in the club that I joined were already my clients. But the result of being in Rotary, they became my friends. He's very approachable. John weighs up the question and gives you it as he sees it. And that's how he's come to be respected. He's a good leader. He's a good man. He's ambitious. And that makes him, of course, a good Rotarian.
he's shown his determination to serve in every possible way, certainly as club president, as district governor, through the RIBI, that's the British and Ireland part of Rotary, and now of course through Rotary International. He never takes on a position lightly. He will give it 110%. Say a few words, John. It's good to be back here again amongst friends. The club is the most important unit in Rotary. The work of Rotary International is not done by the President, it's not done by the Board of Directors, it's not done by the District Governor, it's done by the club members and the club President. I really want to give Rotary back to the Rotarians, as simple as that because I believe that it is the Rotarians that will ensure that Rotary progresses in the 21st century. We've got to look at membership, but I think we've got to look at membership realistically. There is no good one year getting a load of members in the door and the next year they're going out the door. That does not serve Rotary well. Society is changing. Uh, young people seem to be prepared now to support a cause but they're not prepared to join an organisation. So we must make our Rotary meetings attractive to make young people want to join. Networking will come eventually. If you have members in the club and they trust you, they will give you your business. You don't go and ask for it. And I think that's the secret, really. If we are doing good humanitarian projects and we're seen to be doing good in the community, that will attract others into Rotary. Whether Rotary will thrive or whether it will falter, whether Rotary is known with respect or is seen as a relic of days gone by, all this is up to you. For the future of Rotary, is in your hands. Rotary is about helping others. We'll never solve all the problems in the world. This is not the function of Rotary. But the function of Rotary is to be there to help and do what we can. We are the fortunate ones of society. We have a duty as citizens to help other people less fortunate than ourselves. And there's a tremendous amount of good work being done by Rotarians all over the world. You realise what a magnificent organisation we all belong to. We're Rotary International and we can do our best. But as I've said earlier, let us not fail to try.